Well, I'm an assistant professor at Oregon State University, and so I'm teaching um, undergraduate classes. I'm teaching mammalogy, and I'm teaching uh, management and conservation of mammals. I've really enjoyed teaching. It's been a chance to think broadly and synthesize some of this information, and I, I must say I spend a lot of time talking to my students about some of my experiences doing research. I'm just trying to balance um, time in the field, time at my desk, time with my family. Um, as my daughter gets older, I'm really looking forward to bringing her out here. In fact, we already have. I had her out here at four months out in the Mojave uh, with me, so uh, we camped out not far from here and hiked all over the place. So I'm really looking forward actually to involving my family in the rest of my research. Typically you try to glass the animals up uh, in the high country, hike up to the general area where they are, look for fresh pellets. Uh, so we'll do that. Um, at the Marble Mountains we'll be able to look out into a whole bunch of country and talk about a bunch of other populations that are of interest. So there's the South Bristols to the west that were recolonized in the 1990s by sheep from the marble. So they crossed about five kilometers of desert flats and they also crossed a two-lane highway to do that, but it's a small road. Just to the north of the marbles is Interstate 40 and just uh, north of that are two mountain ranges, the Providence and the Granites, that have good populations of sheep. Should be well connected with the marbles, but apparently aren't um, because of Interstate 40. Exactly. Oh yeah, you can feel the, the moisture coming out of these because they're cool to the touch. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's sort of a hay scent. It's got a little bit of that sheep or goat musk to it. Um, not a bad smell at all, actually. So we're just, you'll, you'll pick up, a, and it's got a particularly little sharp edge to it if it's really still got any moisture in the pellet. As, as these do. So it's just a convenient way to quickly assess how old the pellets are. For the genetic work I did, I tried to get the freshest pellets I could because it seemed that there was then less risk, less risk of the DNA degrading, although I often would use pellets that were even weeks old with, with fair success. I have, to, I have to be able to see a landscape to visualize the important questions. I have to experience a landscape to really be able to think well about um, what I want to study, how I want to study it. I can't, I can't do that sitting at a desk. Um, even though at the desk is maybe where you're doing the bulk of your writing, your analysis and all that, um, I think it's really important if you're working these systems to be in touch with the systems. Even if it's a short trip, just to get out there, really understand how it is to work on the landscape, um, I'd say it's critical. I always tried to pack my pack with enough food and water to last at least 24 hours in case something happened out there. Um, so I certainly have uh, regular food for lunch and then granola bars and emergency rations for if I had to spend the night, etc. So getting the water calculation right is important uh, in the summer in particular because water adds so much weight um, to your pack. But having overheated out there a few times and run out of water a few times, I can tell you, you don't want to do that either. First time I came out to the desert was actually um, right about to this location, uh, Old Dad Mountain, and it would have been the summer of 1999. Um, so those first couple years I was taking classes and learning and, and coming up with ideas for this project, but I would come out and do a few trips in the summer to try to get my feet on the ground. Um, I really started working out here seriously in 2000, so it's been about nine years, I guess, that I've been kind of a regular out here. But we need... We need fine scale movement on these guys. Clint is a very special person, sort of the ideal person you could ever ask to work with. Um, first of all, I brought him out into this desert in the heat of the summer, took him on a short trip to sort of show him how you deal with this hot desert in the summer, and that's all I had to do. He's such a good field biologist that he picked it up immediately and he was on his own working and was willing to work alone, even, and few people would do that. And, but that's what it would take to make this project happen that he did. Yeah. 
Um, I've seen some more infrastructure. I've seen cell phone towers go up in places. Um, I've seen traffic volumes get heavier on some of these roads. Um, but then I've also seen some, some exciting changes. I've seen some populations of sheep that were just the barest beginnings of a colonization take off. We've seen some populations do very well out here. Um, documented one extinction, but it was right at the start of when I was working, and it was who knows how, you know, it might have been years that those, those sheep were gone. We've seen a lot of sheep populations doing well. There's been a lot of interest in even possibly mitigating existing barriers, so um, finding ways to get animals over or under some of these big interstates. It's, it's really life-changing to be able to come out here and spend this kind of time exploring and thinking and working, and I've had wonderful people to work with out here. Um, you know, people I consider colleagues from all sorts of backgrounds who have an interest in biology, conservation, wildlife, any of those things. Um, so hearing their stories and getting their input has been also really exciting. So I just, I just feel lucky to be working out here.